Good day, friends. It is the 25th of October. Uh, yes, you may realize I am not uh, in my home stretch. Uh, in fact, I'm nowhere near Moscow at the moment. I am at the epicenter of the next big fight against the Western hegemony. Brooks is uh, closed out, and the next battle is coming here. I am in Belize, Georgia. I've uh, been here many times. I was here as uh, part of my biography. In 2002, I was a military advisor here. So, cities change quite a bit, of course. Um, always interesting. Uh, you come, you see something new. Got to give a little shout out to uh, the sponsors. Uh, Exit Strategy World, setting up here an office. Uh, so, for people who want to get out of the U.S., uh, want to get their money somewhere safe um, and live in a comfortable environment where your money will take you quite a lot further than it'll ever do in the US. Uh, Georgia. Well, first of all, of course, I'm going to say Russia. Uh, we'll work with that too. But uh, the easiest one uh, right off the bat to get in, uh, at least to start off with, is Georgia. No visas required for Americans. Uh, a little difficult getting uh, some uh, bank accounts open because they do require more paper. But the big, uh, big but on this, for anyone who realized what I'm talking about, Georgia and Russia, of course, do not cooperate with the uh, terrorist organization, the IRA, I'm sorry, the IRS, the other terrorist organization. Uh, no FATCA. Uh, so they do not give away your information. Uh, so you can open up accounts here where you can't open up accounts if you only have American citizenship. You can't open up accounts in most of Europe because they just don't want to deal with FATCA, uh, which was designed just for that. Make sure your money stays in the U.S. Uh, Georgia doesn't play that game. Russia doesn't play that game. And Georgia, why I'm saying Georgia is the next big battleground, because tomorrow are parliamentary elections. And believe you me, uh, the Soros, uh, Munchkins, Rats, and, uh, and Punch Packers, which have tried to flood into Georgia quite a bit. This time, Georgia is restricting their entry. But there's quite a few that have been uh, converted into the cult of Soros and open society here in Georgia, unfortunately. Uh, there's absolutely zero chance that the liberals are going to uh, win elections. None. Uh, they'll probably be losing seats. Uh, for which reason, Zarabashvili, uh, who is the uh, French president of Georgia, has already declared that the elections are not uh, legal and are being stolen. So she declares this two weeks before the elections because she knows that her side is going to lose miserably. Uh, people don't want a war with Russia. People want good relations with Russia. People want peace and prosperity and not uh, become a second Ukraine. In fact, uh, there's been a recent article that came out. Uh, former uh, Prime Minister of Georgia, Grabashvili, uh, I think. I'm, I'm bad with names. Pompeo on his farewell tour, uh, that, that cheating, lying bastard, uh, globalist Satanist, he came here, he said, hey, open up another front with Russia. And they said, why would you do that? First of all, you know, it's not in our interest. Second of all, we wouldn't last three, four days against Russia if Russia came in. It's like, that's right, but then you can do a partisan war for years against Russia. So go sacrifice yourself to the Anglo interest. Go die off as a culture, destroy your country, for what? So the Anglos can uh, get bonus points and uh, get some more money in their wallets. Uh, the, ex the extremely rich uh, Anglos can get better at it. And they're other than Anglo uh, brothers and sisters who equally share the power there. So yes, you know, that, the proposal, uh, you know, national suicide. So that uh, what can happen? so that the Americans and the English can be better off fighting Russia. Well, Georgia, thankfully, uh, was much wiser and said, hell no. I just know, but hell no. Go jump off a bridge. For which uh, they've already had two attempted Maidans in one year. And this is the third one in just a little over a year. Um, so yes, of course, they're going to start something. I'm going to be here... I'm going to videotape it, uh, I'm going to let you know and see the truth of what happens when liberal, uh, the liberal swineherd 
arrives in your country. They've been cleaning up Rostaveli. Uh, I was here in July. And Rostaveli was a graffiti-laden uh, shithole. And it's normally a very nice street. It's the main street. Uh, it's it's very uh, a beautiful area. It's got the parliament buildings. It's got a lot of the main buildings. And the uh, liberal swine herd arrived. They couldn't uh, t- grab power because, you know, that's democracy for you. Grabbing power by the, uh, the barrel of a gun or the mob. That's uh, Western democracy in its nutshell. And then you can kill everybody who wants to uh, remove you from power once uh, you've got power by the barrel of a gun. Uh, Western democracy. And then, let's see if you can see uh, the presidential palace. Well, one of them, anyways. That's like a Shvili built on top of, uh, after he moved two, uh, two sections of the old city. Um, right there where you see the Georgian flag with the big dome. Yeah, that's a uh, house he built for himself with American money, by the way. <laughs> but all that's aside. Uh, so, yeah, uh, your money goes well if you're an American taxpayer. So, yeah, the, the Georgian, uh, this is going to be the next battleground, unfortunately to say, but that is, but I'm very confident that uh, the Georgian dream and then the various conservative parties are going to win this bout. Uh, and the West is going to lose another battlefield, and in effect, the West is going to lose all of the Caucasus and their attempts to stir up uh, another front for Russia in the Caucasus by sacrificing the people who live here. Uh, the people, and, and you know, the commercials here are flat out saying exactly that. You want They're showing uh, pictures of Georgia with investments and part, a large chunk of investments coming from Russia. Uh, investments coming in, and on the other split screen, they're showing Ukraine. As it is now. Like, do you, and they flat out tell the, the populace, do you want to be like them or do you want to be like we are now? Well, so, once, once uh, these elections are done and the attempted uh, liberal push is broken. Uh, guarantee within the next uh, half a year or so, uh, there'll be normal relations again between uh, Russia and Georgia in all manner. It is, they're already there as it is, uh, but we're talking about uh, embassies will be open. Uh, so there'll be a uh, Georgian embassy finally open in Moscow and a Russian embassy here in Belisi. So they're not going to be going through the Swiss. Um, and basically, they're already talking to each other constantly. So it's uh, it's just once these elections are done. And then there's another uh, uh, tunnel being built for another transition point uh, so that uh, there will be more traffic going across the mountains. And Russia is now, again, pushing uh, the three, three, three plus one uh, negotiations, which is Georgia, Abkhazia, South Asia, plus Russia, to form a confederation of sorts, or federation of sorts in Georgia, and bring in, uh, bring back Abkhazia and South Asia as autonomous uh, provinces, just like Ajari is. So, and this, uh, and the split that started with a lot of uh, Anglo influence back in uh, early 1990s. So, finally, we'll, uh, we'll put this issue to rest. And this is the main issue that America has been exploiting for 30 years now to try to ruin relations between Russia and Georgia. And something interesting, uh, too, in 2008, when the 2008 uh, war, six day war, uh, happened, uh, Russia proposed the same thing. And Saakashvili agreed. Of course, the, the Yanks aren't going to have anything of that. The last thing they need is for peace to break out. They need war, because that's where they make their money, not off of peace uh, and human harmony. So they very quickly uh, got on uh, Saakashvili, and Saakashvili started his uh, little adventure in South Asia, which turned into that six day war and the utter defeat of uh, Saakashvili's forces and a uh, break in uh, diplomatic relations with Russia. And it's taken this long to get everything back on trail, but it is going on trail. Uh, righteousness and justice will win out and against anglo Satan- satanic uh, machinations, which are being defeated everywhere around the world. And the big blow, of course, to NATO was that Turkey joined uh, into uh, the BRICS conference. Uh, BRICS payment system's coming. Uh, everything, uh, everything's going not the way the Anglos wanted it to go. Their hegemony is crumbling. They still have their their whores and vassals in Europe and uh, East Asian you know, ones, but we'll see how long they can hold those on. Too. Uh, I think uh, the first one that's going to break Turkey was ne- never fully, out, but it is, by the way, the second largest military power in 
uh, NATO. So that's a bit, already a pretty damn big blow. Um, but the next thing that's going to go, the next one that's going to break away, I think, uh, from all of this is probably going to be Hungary. Because as Orban has already flat out looked, looked the beast in the eyeballs, in the, in her squirmy eyeballs, that is uh, van der Leyen lying, lying. By the way, her family got their noble title from uh, Tsar Alexander II. That's right, she's got Russian roots. And when the revolution started, they fled, kept her noble title, of course, uh, and turned anti-Russian. Um, yeah, go figure. So, they, uh, somebody's playing, uh, there's a street musician playing Greek tunes in Georgia. Go figure. But, okay, people got to make money. Um, so anyways, so that happened that way. And he looks her, he looked her straight in the eye during uh, an EU parliamentary uh, meeting uh, on video and told her, you're trying to overthrow our government and we're not going to stand for it. And that really is what they're trying to do. So I think the next one that's going to go exit stage left is going to be uh, Hungary, who they consider a dictatorship. A dictatorship because the people chose the government and they don't want anything to do with that insanity called the, the EU liberal agenda. So, I'm in a park right across uh, from uh, the old city of Georgia, and we're heading in that direction. Uh, the old city of Belize, I'm sorry, Georgia. Um, luckily, say, everything's more or less quiet. Uh, two days ago was a big meeting of the uh, 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 Georgian Dream Party. Uh, two days before that was a big meeting of the, uh, the liberals who streamed into uh, uh, Independence Square. Uh, so, you know, a, again, you've got Zerubashvili, who has Georgian roots. She's the president of Georgia. She has Georgian roots. She wasn't born in Georgia. She was born in France. Uh, she barely speaks Georgian. She is a retiree from the French Foreign Service. That's right. She draws her pension from Macron and his government. She uh, spent 20 years uh, in the French Foreign uh, Service. Her last position was ambassador to Georgia, where Saakashvili gave her citizenship. And somehow or other, she got placed as president. Luckily, presidents, this is a parliamentary republic now, so she doesn't have too much power. But what she does do is she pardons uh, all the revolutionaries and uh, neoliberals and liberals that uh, the government arrests. So they've been trying to impeach her and get her out. She is the number one uh, foreign agent in Georgia. And this is a woman who, not too long ago, uh, called on Macron, president of France, to come help her get rid of the ruling party and the government here. So the party that was elected by the people. Because they're anti-EU, they're illiberal. In other words, they don't want uh, their kids' nads chopped off or breasts chopped off and you know, changed to one of the 80, 90, 100 other genders. Uh, the, no, the, keep, the genders keep multiplying like rabbits and rats, and since the Georgians don't want that, uh, apparently their you know their government and the people that they elected uh, to represent them need to be removed. And so the president of Georgia is calling on the president of France and EU uh, member states to come overthrow the government. Hmm, what is that called? I'll let you figure that out for your own self. So at least right now, as I'm saying, everything's peaceful. Uh, nothing too bad. When I flew in, uh, the Georgian government was actively filtering out uh, EU liberal journalists and uh, L LGBTQWXYZ crowd I was trying to fly into Georgia and send them home. Uh, I wound up myself waiting two hours uh, to get filtered through, and that's counting. I've got very good friends in very high places, but since I'm uh, not pro EU and such, uh, they, they let us in. They were checking everybody like that. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And just so you understand the, how deep that rabbit hole runs, when they send the LGBTQ crowd home on the next flight and they send a couple of Ukrainian uh, journalists uh, back to uh, uh, Country 404, uh, the, the lawyers for the LGBTQ, yes, they have lawyers here. Uh, for the LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ, they came in, uh, came to the airport, 
started uh, protests uh, in front of the airport, uh, screaming that you're you're being uh, intolerant and so on. Yeah, yeah, they start a little circus. So that, that's a, the, that, these are the Soros people. This is the level of their organization. They have lawyers here. They have uh, they infiltrate society and then they break it down from internally, and then the uh, the parasites make money. By the way, there's uh, I don't know if I call this uh, clown world or not, or just sad world. I think more it's like sad world. So, article came out again. I don't can't verify that it's uh, all true or not, but I tend to believe it. Uh, Soros got a new heart, and Soros got a new liver, and they both came from a donor, uh, a, a donor who was a Ukrainian officer. I'm sure he was very thrilled as uh, he was still, still alive when they decided to uh, deorgan him. Uh, and send him to uh, Saint Bandera in hell, uh, but yeah, apparently he wasn't that injured because they could deorgan him, and the organs were rushed over uh, to Soros and implanted the next day. It's a great world we live in, where the devil's own can just get replacement parts from people who, whether they like it or not, are going to give them their, those replacement parts. And such goes the world we live in. So. Keep you all in touch in what's going on. God bless.